Okay, today we're going to check out this, the coolest thing since sliced bread, the Positol Fraba Bis C Absolute Encoder Kit. Um, this is pretty amazing. Um, 17 bits of single turn resolution and, and up to 32 bits of multi turn. Of course, uh, we can handle up to 32 bits of single and multi turn, so 16 bits of multi-turn is just fine uh, 0.1 degree accuracy 60 millimeter diameter um, that's pretty fantastic the operating temperature uh, cold to pretty hot you know it gets hot on the back of a motor um, there's some other cool features here that we'll mention but you can see how easy this is to adapt to your motor uh, so some uh, mechanical connections, the encoder device with a dust cover, and a strain relief for the connector. Um, that's that's one flavor of adaptation. Um, a critical feature here is no battery. It literally, it will do multi-turn without gears and without a battery. So this is uh, a pretty spectacular uh, capability. And of course, you know, good rugged ruggedness for industrial shock and vibration. You know, this might actually work in some uh, uh, military defense style applications. Though the actual encoder that I have today is one that, um, you know, you may typically see a U.S. digital kit encoder. So the old kit encoder would come with uh, a sensor, a disc, um, mount on the back of your motor. Of course, the problem with these guys is you, you don't have any commutation tracks for your brushless motor. So you need an absolute encoder or you need halls. Um, the Maxon motor, of course, comes with halls. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But so there's a, a mounting adapter plate, uh, which goes to the shaft of the motor. And then you, you, you screw in the, uh, the kit encoder. And there's a nice dust cover with a... Uh, uh, IP65 type connector on the back. And again, you know, harvesting the energy from the device. You know, how do they do that? Well, they've got this little device here, which has a coil in it. And the mag as the magnet spins, it produces a little impulse, which turns on the, you know, the flash chip and allows you to store a count once per rev. So we can keep track of multi-turns even when the device is not powered. It, it generates its own power. Um, other critical features are the ability for self-calibration and shaft align to correct shaft alignment errors. Um, so we'll take a look at the motor I have here today is a Maxon motor. Uh, it's a little 60 watt brushless motor. I got the 272765 which is a stock item here. It's a 48 volt motor, <clears throat> uh, no load speed, 9,000 RPM. The encoder can go up to 12,000 RPM. So that's that's a pretty good pairing. Actually with 48 volts and uh, uh, about 200 RPM per volt, you're, you're only gonna go about 8,000, 9,000 RPM. So your speed torque curve on this one flattens out somewhere just below 10. Uh, so that's a couple of couple of two, three amps anyways. So this uh, Maxon motor, of course, comes with uh, hall sensors uh, already wired in. Uh, I've, I've used those to do comparisons and you can get their kit encoder uh, that comes on the back. Um, this this uh, encoder that we're gonna use is it's the Positol Fraba Absolute and it's not, 500 counts per rev or anything wimpy like that. It's two to the 17, which is 131,072 counts per rev. Now the drive I'm gonna to use today is the Copley Excelnet Plus micro module. This is a new um, EtherCAT AEV drive. Uh, it's a small module, about less than the size of a business card. Um, there's also an easy mounting board and an optional dust cover. Um, so I use the easy board to get myself up and running. Uh, interesting characteristic about the drive is that it can do dual absolute. 
So we can have two BIS-C encoders, one on the load, one on the motor. Today we have one on the motor. And then for wiring the BIS-C, it's pretty simple. You power it with five volts. Uh, you, you, you get the clock out to the encoder and then you get data back. Um, this is a unidirectional form of communication to clock and get data. Uh, but this, this uh, BIS-C has a bidirectional spec, so you could write down to the encoder. Um, we, we don't need to do that with this one. This will work on a unidirectional. Uh, but you can see that the clock comes out on XX naught and the data comes back on A, A naught. Uh, other drives, it's S and S naught, but the A and A naught is now the bidirectional. All right, so we'll take a quick look at the, uh, the note that comes with the encoder. Um, energy harvesting, 32-bit, 17-bit, multi-turn, no battery, self-calibrating. Um, you can quite a range of voltage there, so 5 volts is, is safe for that. Uh, 100 kilohertz to 10 megahertz, so our standard 4 megahertz for the BIS-C will work just fine. So in several microseconds, we get the position data. And a maximal permissible speed of 12,000 RPM. That's pretty good. Um, this one has, of course, 16 bits of multi-turn accuracy of less than 12 bit at 0.087 degrees. Um, I think we may be doing a little better than that actually for the single turn. We'll take a look at that with using the copley drive. And then of course the wiring diagram, you know, ground and plus five on VCC clock, uh, clock signals, and then the data signals. So those are the, the pinouts that you have for for wiring, and uh, you can see there's a cable option for this. Um, the package that I'm using is a circular one, but the encoder is small. The overall diameter less than 50 millimeters, even for the dust cover and the mounting of the dust cover. Uh, the inner diameter of the device is again like 35 millimeters or something. Um, so there's some mechanical specifications. For, for mounting and some cable options. So just to go over a little bit again, we've got the AEV Excelnet micro module here mounted to the Easy board. I've got that hooked up to the Maxon motor with the Positol Absolute. You can see the feedback device goes off to the drive, the motor power wires. Um, and uh, here's an example, like a Renko on the back of a little size 17 motor some other uh, adapter kit. These are just your basic incremental. This one's incremental with um, commutation tracks, and this one is just purely incremental. So that's insufficient uh, for commutating a brushless motor. This one is very sufficient for a brushless motor, but it's not absolute. It's only you know, like several thousand counts. This has 131,070 counts per rev. And we'll take a look at basic setup. So using the Copley CME2 version 8.0, I'm able to talk to the AEV, the new Excelnet micro um, panel drive, and we can select the encoder type, and we set the bits. The bits is 17 bits of single turn, 131.72, and the number of revs is 2 to the 16, which works out to 65536. There's no silly alignment bits with these guys. You know, they follow the spec really good. And there's no unusual configurations. It's just the default configuration of the BIS-C. Um, nobody took liberty and changed the spec to do whatever they want. So this, this one is a good one. Um, for mounting the encoder, you can, of course, uh, move it to the zero position and then install the feedback device. Um, so to, to get this, you can use the manual phase screen and, and align the motor shaft by hooking up power to a pair of wires and pulling it to a pole position and then attaching the encoder to the zero position. Um, that way they come out consistently and all the same. So let's take a move here and see what we get with this fancy encoder. We'll do a little analysis on the, on the feedback here. 
So what we can see is uh, accelerating in magenta um, to a velocity of 8,000 RPM and then decelerating to a stop. The following error before you move is near zero, increases a bit when you're accelerating and stabilizing. And while you're running, there's a little bit of ripple here. We'll take a look at that. And then as you decel, again, the following error and then settle to steady state. Um, this error while we're running has to do with the motor's detent. So based on the speed, you'll see a different frequency here. There's a little cog in the motor and we're getting plus or minus uh, 100 counts or so of, of error while we're moving. So this is actually still pretty good for scanning. You know, 100 out of 131,000 is not very much error. And uh, we'll take a look at the the uh, resolution and the accuracies. Um, actually, this will just show us the resolution here. You can see when we hit the steady state, uh, we're at zero counts, plus or minus one or two counts. Um, this would have to do probably with signal to noise ratios and uh, accuracies in the encoder. So if you knock off, off a couple of bits for, um, from the resolution of 17 bits, you're probably down to 15 bits of, of accuracy. Um, well, at least accurate resolution, the accuracy should probably be measured uh, external to the device here. Um, so you'll notice that uh, I am hitting my speed limit here. I get a little voltage limit warning here. Uh, during acceleration is when you use the most current. Um, but otherwise, uh, you get some back EMF and some field-oriented control here with the D and Q vectors. Um, I do want to note that, uh, you know, how, how are we able to get it so good with the Copley? Um, there's two things. You know, one, the motor manufacturer may not tell you to make sure the case of the motor is connected to earth. Uh, don't mount to an anodized surface. You don't get good conductivity. So I brought earth to the case of my motor. Um, I've tuned the AEV in such a way that I'm critically damped. Um, I use my intuition to tune, and uh, maybe a quantum computer could do some better than human tuning in the future, but for now, uh, I'd say, you know, tuning it just softly and nicely is, is a good way to tune. And if you take a look at the, the rise time here, of the square waves. Right now I'm measuring U and V output and it's center weighted so it's always switching and we have uh, looks like about 300-400 nanoseconds of rise time but you know that's not how you measure rise time. Uh, you do the 10 to 90 percent. So when the competitor says they've got 40 nanoseconds uh, they're not measuring the 10 to 90 percent here. Um, I get a rise time of about 135 microsecond and this is at full speed. So this is uh, the switching edge, uh, low energy, low noise. Um, that's really good for uh, an encoder device that has analog signals that it's measuring. This gives Copley the advantage over the competitors uh, for more accuracy, uh, less noise, emissions, and immunity. Um, of course, I'm more than 10 miles from home and have a a computer bag, so I guess I'm an expert on emission, but there's a, there's a lot that goes into it, and uh, maybe in the future we'll talk some more about that. Hey, thanks for watching.